this morning? Yeah, I just want to make a comment on voting. You, you will be surprised when you're talking amongst people what they know about what's happening in this country now and what we're actually voting on to change things in this country. I, um, we was, we was, I hope none of them are watching online today because I'm going to pick on my family. <laughs> That's not funny, Keisha. <laughs> so anyway, one of the comments that was made at the dinner table was, oh, I'm, I'm a widow and I live on a very low income and I have nothing and when this crook was in the office before, that's what she called him, a crook that was in this office before, he took everything away from us. And I says, well, what do you got now? Well, I live on a very low income and don't have much. And I says, well, get, get used to not, if the certain party gets in office, get used to not having even as much as you got now. Amen. So. Then I was talking to a cousin, and he said, well, I don't like either candidate. I don't like either candidate that's running, so I'm just not going to vote. That's very smart. But now that same guy, and I'll pick on him because I can do it. He was in high school the same time I was. He was at Reedsville. I was at Freedom. He, he said, um, I won't vote. And so I said to him, now you're the same guy when Trump gets in, or this other person, I don't even know who it is, going to get in, might get in, um, are you going to sit and complain because you didn't vote? That's right. yeah. And that's the type of people that you got out there. Mm -hmm. So we, we just have to, we just have to um, be ready, and when you're talking with people, state your opinion, let them know, give them some facts. <laughs> I don't know. Um, Eric, you've probably seen this, the print, of, uh, print out of how much uh, groceries cost you and what it costs you now, gas costs you, what it costs now. I, I know being, um, I still say, Kim, I'm in a business. <laughs> I look at what we are paying for supplies, what we paid for two, three years ago. It's just crazy. It's crazy. And then, then you go to the customer and say, well, I gotta have this much more. Oh no, oh no, we can't, we can't do that. We can't do that, but it costs us more to do a job for them. So, so we, we, need to, we need to open our mouths. And, and you know, we are Christians and we have to let the world know that we are Christians. How do you do that? You let your light shine. Amen. It's just like that story. You hear Jerry Savelle, they were ministering someplace, and they had time off between meetings, so him and his wife went shopping. Well, I, I sympathize with Jerry being <laughs> because when you go shopping with a woman, you're in a store and you're in there. Well, well Jerry started wandering around, and he'd go from... He was in a mall type area and he'd go from one store to another. And this woman noticed this light, would follow him wherever he went. Finally she got, I gotta find out. So she went and asked him. And that was the light of God was shining off that guy. Is that gonna happen to us or is this just gonna happen? Yeah, yeah, it will. It will. It's just like, um, it's just like, um, I was on a job site, um, it rained so uh, my crew was gone, but I was there and there was a carpenter working there. And so I was discussing some things with him and the homeowner and the carpenter says to me, how come you don't get undone about all these changes they want to make and everything and, and how you're going to do that, how you're going to accomplish that? And I says, well, I just... Turn it over to God. I said, I'm not smart enough for all this, but God is. So I turn it over to God. Let him help me make the decisions. Well, he says, I was thinking about that. He says, you know, he says, I was a pretty prosperous business person, he said. 
He said, I own all kinds of investment property. He said, I, build, I was building, doing all, and then he said the economy crashed. He says, today I'm flat broke. And he says, this bothers me. And he says, lately though, he says, I want to know what, what you know about this, he says. Lately, he says, in my sleep or in between time when I'm resting, something comes on my mind, he said. And something is changing. Something's trying to change in me, he said. What do you, he says, do you know what that is? I said, I sure do. Yeah, I know what that is. I says, did you ever hear of the Holy Spirit? What's that? What's that? You know, each one of you have that in you. And it, and you, it should be shining. It, that's what we we're here for on this earth, to be examples for others. And a Christian should be more of an example than the normal person, non-Christian. So be careful. Be careful what you see and do. Uh, just a, another a quick example. We were at a graduation party yesterday. And as we're leaving, this young man uh, come up to Pastor Jan, gave her a big hug and stuff. And Pastor Jan had no idea who this guy was. This guy, I'm going to say, I don't know if I got the years exact, but I'm going to say about 30 years ago, Pastor Jan actually was ministering to that family. There was a divorce going on, and he wound up a divorce in a family with a divorced kid. Uh, and he, he moved away, and he's living out in New York now because what he's seen in Pastor Jan 30 years ago, he remembered that. The word, of, the word of God, the light that shined off of her. He remembered that. 30 years, <laughs> that's a long time. So just be ready. Like I told Brenda one day, I kind of surprised her, called her up here when she wasn't supposed to get up here yet. And I said, well, you gotta be ready in season and out of season. That, that's the same thing. We have to be ready. We have to be ready. So, okay. Now that's enough of all that. Because I'm done now, Pastor. Oh, I, I'm not? No. <laughs> okay. I thought that would be enough for today. You know, sometimes people get sick of hearing me. No. <laughs> so, <clears throat> today... Just before we take up our tithes and offerings, we're going to talk about a little bit of something that people have problems with. We're going to talk about things out of the book of, book of Proverbs. Why do people have prob problems with the book of Proverbs? Not, not women. Women don't have problems, but guys do. Why do guys have problems with it? Because the book of Proverbs, most of the time, refers to her, the female. So that's the book of Proverbs is the female wisdom of the Bible. And so a lot of things in the book of Proverbs, the scripture will say her, her. The her is the wisdom that the Bible is talking about. So, you know, there's two hands of wisdom. There's two hands of wisdom. And I'm going to Try to prove that to you. No, I'm not going to try. I am going to prove it to you today. There's two hands of wisdom. In Proverbs 3, 13 through 16. Keegan, if you put that up there. It says, Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and a man that giveth understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver and grain, and gold, therefore, than even the fine gold. She, again, she is more precious than rubies. And all things that thou can desire are not to be compared to her. Length of days is in her right hand and her left hand. Riches and honor. There they're talking about the two hands, left hand, right hand. So there, there's two hands in Proverbs in the Book of Wisdom. And that they're talking about the two hands. God's wisdom is seen as a beautiful woman. When you see a beautiful woman, if you see wisdom, it's the same. 
You look at that girl, oh, she's a beautiful woman. You look at the wisdom in the Proverbs, that's beautiful also. So you, that's, that's an easy comparison for guys, right? Beautiful woman, word of wisdom. So wisdom comes with two hands filled with natural blessings. The right hand, the prominent hand in the Bible contains health. The left hand contains wealth and honor. God first gives the right hand health so you can live a long life. Why? So you can enjoy the benefits of the left hand, of the wealth and riches. Wisdom's, wisdom's two hands are rewarded for, for your spiritual growth. It says in John 3, 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health. Like the right hand, or like the left hand says. The right hand says good health, left hand says um, long and prosperous life. So the two hands are what we talk about, are the two hands of wisdom. wisdom. Now we as parents, we're supposed to uh, tell our children about the wisdom in the Proverbs. We're supposed to teach them. We start teaching them from young on. Why do we start teaching them from young on? Because they're not old enough to understand. So it's our duty as parents to teach the young ones as they grow up. And eventually, they'll grow into it where they'll understand the teachings of the Bible. And that's why, um, that's why in Ephesians 6, 1 and 3, it says, um, I got to find it in my notes. He, Ephesians 6, it says, Children, obey your parents. <clears throat> obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with, with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live a long life on this earth. So that's why it's our duty as parents to bring our young children up in, in, in the wisdom of the Lord until they become of age to understand. <clears throat> Solomon told us to seek after wisdom because it is the primary thing to attain. Jesus told us to seek the kingdom first, then all these things for long life, riches and honor will be added unto us. Health and riches, while forsaken wisdom, will be quickly lost. Joshua told Israel, only be strong and very courageous that you may absorb to do according to all the new laws which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from God's law to the right hand of long life or to the left hand of financial gain, that you may prosper wherever you go. Joshua warns Israel not to forsake the word and be taken by its rewards only. Chasing after the right and the left hand. Riches come with maturity. So for the riches to come, you have to mature in the word of God. Mature in the word of wisdom out of the book of Proverbs. <clears throat> and in Matthew 5, 5 says, The meek can be teachable and they will inherit the earth. You know, we, we take a look at many ministries and many pastors teach like this. Some teach that the right hand is the length of days and health, and they study nutrition, and nutrition, you know, nutrition is not really a doctrine in the Bible, but they just hang, hang on just the right hand. They don't, they don't teach on both hands. They just teach on the right hand. And some ministers go the other route. They just teach what the left hand, the riches. And that we, we find that today in a lot of ministries. That's all they're teaching on is the riches, the riches. So we want to we wanna be balanced. You know, money is not a doctrine either in the Bible. So there's no, there's no such thing as called a, a ministry of blessings or finances. There's no such thing as that. Some ministers get hung up on that. They just teach on one thing and not the other. 
<laughs> so we, we're never supposed to stop seeking wisdom. So how do you stop from seeking wisdom? You close the book of Proverbs. You close it, close it up. But you stay, you stay in it. So you never, never stop seeking wisdom. Pursuit of wisdom lasts a lifetime. And its rewards are eternal. You go on and on, never stopping. Friends and family may forsake you, but Jesus will not. He will not forsake you. After being forsaken for everyone, Paul still asked Timothy for the word of God. After forsaken, he was forsaken by everyone else. If you never quit seeking wisdom, God will never quit giving you the desires of your heart. So many use to seek wisdom has stopped to live off their financial rewards. Oh, I'm really wealthy now. I got all these riches. I don't need God anymore. And then they, they try to live off of what their rewards have been from when they did obey God and watch and read the word. So we need to never stop supporting the gospel and the word of God. So my instructions to you today don't ever stop seeking the word don't ever stop looking at the, the book of proverbs the wisdom that's in that book and if you have a need if there's a mountain there go to proverbs you're going to find your answer so that's what we want to do so minister deb you want to come and lead us in a song of worship this morning with a little more scripture today. Proverbs 10, 22. The blessing the Lord makes truly rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. Also in Proverbs 16, 3. The Lord causes my thoughts, your thoughts, to become agreeable to his will. So how do I know what his will is? I look for it in the scripture. I look to see what his will is for us to be, where our thoughts should be. And so my plans are established and succeed. That's Proverbs 16.3. We just thank you for the book of Proverbs and the wisdom that comes out of that book. Let's reach our hands out and pray over our tithes and offerings this morning. Father, we praise you and we thank you. We just thank you for the opportunity that we can sow into your kingdom, Father. And Father, when we sow a seed, we are guaranteed there's going to be a harvest. Even when you don't sow a seed, sometimes you get a harvest. I didn't sow a seed, a pumpkin seed, in front of my planter, in front of the shop, but you ought to see the pumpkin plant that's there and the pumpkins that are on it. So sometimes somebody else sows a seed for you, and, yeah. it, and you get a harvest. Amen. So we thank you, Lord, and we give all the glory to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, Amen and glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, what we're going to do here this morning, Brenda's going to come up as well, because now God has been setting us up. I'm going to sit down, okay? I'm going to sit down. You stand up for a moment, though, because the Holy Spirit's just all over me. nights. Even if you're not coming, please read this. This is so prevalent for this time. It's awesome. And then also, visitations from God. Please get it and read it and reread it. Then, well, I'm going to hold that for a moment, but I really, every day I read this and I go into it deeper and I, I look up scriptures, okay? Like for instance, with Andrew Womack, he has a commentary 
Adams is on there, Clark is on there, that you can get understanding because there's so many things that, that it's hard to understand unless you go in and check it out. So, and that's what God wants in these days now is so that with all of our getting, we get understanding, Amen. right? And don't forget the blood because this blood still speaks today. When you say, I plead the blood of Jesus, it is speaking over you for whatever you have need of. Amen. See, if you don't know what you have, you're destroyed for lack of knowledge, right? But anyway, I'm going to go here. Now, I have, I have my living Bible today because I wanted to read this, and I, we're going to go into Ephesians, okay? We're going to go into Ephesians because we want to open this because what is our heritage? Our heritage is the word of God. And we're going to see this a little bit clearer in this today. So I'm going to start right there at 9. God, at 1, 9 of Ephesians. And this is, like I said, the Living Bible. Okay, whatever version you have, it will be good. I know it will. God has told us his secret reason for sending Christ, a plan he decided on in mercy long ago. God did this a long time ago. So can we be assured if he says something, it's going to come to pass? Yes. Well, that's what we're going to share as well this morning with Colonel Vavort here. And this was his purpose, that when the time is ripe, the time is ripe, folks, yeah. he will gather us all together from wherever we are, in heaven or on earth, to be with him in Christ. I don't know about you guys, but when I leave this earth, I'm going to heaven. Amen. All right, then he says, in 11, moreover, because of what Christ has done, we have become gifts to God that he delights in, for as part of God's, what does it say in there? Sovereign plan. His sovereign plan is in heaven. It's on the earth. But we have get, been given the free will that we can do whatever we want. And that's where it gets messy. So as far as God's sovereign plan, we were chosen from the beginning to be his, and all things happened just as he decided long ago. God's purpose in this was that we should praise God. Oh, it's getting better. That we should praise God and give glory to him for doing these mighty things for us. Are we really thankful to God for what he does for us? That's what he wants. Who were the first to trust in Christ? There are those in the grave that are going to rob, rise up out, and we're going next. Okay? 13. And because of what Christ did, all you others, too, who heard the good news about how to, how to be saved and trusted Christ were marked as belonging to Christ by the Holy Spirit, who long ago had been promised in all of, to all of us Christians. He presents within us, his presence within us is God's guarantee. It's our guarantee is in the word of God. What does it guarantee? It guarantees that we should take this here and we should continue to share it with our children's children. Don't teach them about business and money and all that. Teach them the word of God, and that will follow. Amen. That will follow. Because money is the least important in the kingdom of God. And he will not bless people that take money before him. He will not. He can't. So we have a guaranteed that he really will give us all that he promised See, we've got all these promises in the Word of God, and they're all ours, but are we getting them? No. You know why? Because we're ignorant. Or what do we call in Matthew 5, 22, fools? Yeah, fools are empty-headed idiots. 
Yeah. I'm not calling you that. That's just what it's saying in the commentary. Okay. And so the spirit seal promised, and the spirit seal upon us means that God has already purchased us. Remember your sign that's hanging around your neck? Yeah. He purchased you. He bought you. You belong to him. You don't belong to yourself. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Us. And that he guarantees to bring us to himself. This is just one more reason for us to praise our glorious God. Now we choose. We choose. Do you want to go to heaven? No, I changed my mind. I'm going to go back to the world's ways. You can't have both, can you? Mm -mm. Now, verse 15. That is why ever since I heard of your strong faith, Paul said, in the Lord Jesus Christ and the love you have for Christians everywhere, I have never stopped thanking God for you. That means that prayer is still, still in this earth for us. I pray for you constantly, Paul said, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you wisdom, oh, to see clearly and really understand who Christ is and all that he has done for you. He wants us to see everything that we have. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light, and that's the word of God, so that you can see something of the future he has called you to see. Now listen to this. Ooh, I like this part. I want you to realize, he says, that God has been made rich because we who are Christ has been given to him. God is rich because of us. What, what do you mean he's rich? When you said, Jesus, come into my heart, that made him rich. Then another one said it, that makes you rich. So the more you get this word into you, that's what makes you rich. Don't ever look at yourself making you rich, because if you do it, it it's guaranteed to be taken away. All right? Because where is the promise? The promise is in the storehouse. God said, whatever you put in that storehouse, that's what you call on to live on. That's what you call on to sow. That's what you, because you've already sown it in the heavenlies, it already belongs to you. Yep. So how much have you sown in the past? How much? You see, it's there waiting for you to call on it, to use it. Amen. What was it doing all the time? Waiting for us to use it, Amen. to take it. Amen. All right? I pray that you will begin to understand how incredibly great his power is to help those that believe him. It is that same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead. We have power. Now remember this. This word, when you speak this word, this has the power and it has fragrance in it. And people will be brought on to you through that fragrance. You're going to smell good or you're going to stink. There's no other way to say it. When you do Satan's work, you'll stink. When you do God's work, you'll have a beautiful fragrance that'll bring other people onto you, and it'll bless you. So where are we seated? We're seated in heavenly places at God's right hand in heaven, far, far above, above any other king or ruler or dictator or leader. Yes, his honor is far more glorious than that of anyone else E what? what? What does he say? Either in this world or the world to come. You've got to catch some of these little words in between there. And God has put all things under Jesus' feet, and he's made him the supreme head of the church, which is his body. And he's filled us with himself. He's filled us. He's filled you. When you said, Lord, come into my heart, he filled us with himself. Amen. So, that's why we watch what music we listen to. We watch what programs we listen to. We watch because I want to keep him first place. Seek you first the kingdom of God, and all of these things will be given unto you. What all? All of your inheritance will be given unto you. I don't want to miss anything. No. Right? Now, which is his body. We're filled with himself, the author and the giver of everything everywhere. Amen. What a God we serve. So God is good all the time. All the time. So God, you are, you are so faithful. I, I want to say this here too. We know what's going on 
um, with Harley Davidson and and how they were diamond members, so that's why Dee Dee and Tom burnt all that clothes that they had from Harley Davis. So you all know about that. Yeah, so if you don't look it up a little bit further, because it's bad news. So, you know, we had, and look at Tractor and Supply. They turned around because people said, we're not going to do business with you. Amen. So that's what we have to start to do. Amen. But remember, they've been after this from day one. But we still can pray for things, can't we? Um, I love it because Hobby Lobby is still standing with Jesus, and they don't open on Sundays. Doesn't that, isn't that wonderful? Okay, so what we're going to do, and uh, Brenda, mm -hmm. Colonel Brevoort, she's going to tell them, if you want to show my books, just to get a little bit. Mm -hmm. well, you guys can see them. Good morning. Good, Good morning, morning, mercy. Thank Amen. Thank you, Pastor Jan, for letting me share with you this morning. Um, we're going to touch on a lot of the book by Robin Bullock, um, Pool in the Portal. And he has another book also called God is Absolutely Good. Um, so if you haven't read those, if you want to go to that next level, if you want to get deep into the word, there's a lot of revelation in both of these books. Amen. Yes. Amen. But it's going to require a little study. It's going to require a little meditation on God's word. Yes. So. Absolutely. You know, we're going to share this morning um, some prophecy from Robin Bullock that he shared a couple weeks ago already, but he just had another... Um, another podcast come out on the same topic, right? So we're going to go, we're going to, we're going to go forward from where we were last Sunday, right? Yeah. Um, and, and probably give you some more details into that prophecy, but um, it's just going to be good. Amen. So I just, Amen. so I just pray, Father God, right now that you would yes. think through our minds. Yes, Daddy. Open our hearts to your mm. truth. Father God, Holy Spirit, you just navigate where you want us to go this morning, Father God. Yes, speak Father. Speak through my mind, speak through my vocal cords, oh, all of you and none of me. Because greater is he that is in all of us than he that is in the world. Amen? Amen. Amen. You know, the, this is important to me that we share this because, as Ken said, um, when we were with some people on Friday night, I'll watch what I say, but saying I'm not going to vote for either one. And I just turned around and I said, what did you say as I'm looking? Up? I said, I'll deck you. I'll deck you. <laughs> I was so angry. I was ready to take him out. Because it, is that stupid gone to seed? You can see what's happening in our country, but what we have to do, we have to be informed because we're finding out there's a lot of people out there that are not informed, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And they want to be informed. So that's what we're doing specifically here, informing you where we were and where we're going and where we're at. Amen. Okay, through Robin Bullock and Steve. Okay, so I'm gonna just do a little bit of review um, from last week and then we'll, we'll push into the new material. Mine or hers, Keegan? Hers. All right. Check, check. Mm -hmm. I wasn't on. You wasn't on? Mm -mm. Well, God is good to us, right? Huh? The boy's on the ball. Thank you, Keegan. Thank you, Keegan. All right, so we're going to start out with some foundational scriptures, and then we're going to move into right. um, some of what he discussed as the, some prophecy and then how he aligns the time, which is now, with the word of God. Right? Amen. And, and so we're going to go there. We're going to start. Um, Let me just tell you before she, we've spent hours on this. Mm -hmm. Until you have spent hours and you have meditate, meditated 
and you've gone into, and when I say meditate, you have to pray in the Spirit, asking the Holy Spirit to reveal the truths and his secrets and his wisdom to us so that we'll know what to do. Because you can look over a lot of this stuff and it'll mean nothing to you. And there's a lot of voices out there. But we have to get what lines up with the word of God. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're lining it up with the word of God. Not what somebody says or thinks or feels the word of God. Amen. So we know that God is sovereign in the heavens, right? Right. And we know that in heaven there is no time. Amen. Okay. Thus the word of God is timeless. Mm -hmm. Keegan, can you bring up Ecclesiastes 1, chapter 1, verse 9? Okay. It says, that which has been is what will be. That which is done is what will be done. And there is nothing new under the sun. So in other words, what was will be again. Mm-hmm. And, but on the earth, there are seasons. Seasons, time, same, same word, right? Seasons and time. Now can you bring up Ecclesiastes chapter 3? Yep, verses 1 through 8. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck what is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. There's a little bit more. That's all? You get the idea. If we don't have verse, there we go, yeah. seven and eight. A time to tear, a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak. A time to love, and a time to hate. A time of war, and a time of peace. So there, you know there is a time for everything, right? Mm-hmm. Um, one of the reasons the prophets have come on the scene in this time is for the church. And it's to tell the church to wake up. Okay, this is not a time to doze off. Wake up. What are you doing? You are letting your sons, now this is Robin Bullock, Okay, these are the words of Robin Bullock. You are letting your sons run crazy. You're letting sin into the tabernacle. You're just putting up with things. And the prophets are awakened before the light goes out. The light meaning the truth of God's word. Mm -hmm. This is why the prophets' words keep getting louder. They keep repeating and repeating, right? That's what God's word does. It repeats. Amen. But they're getting louder and louder. That means wake up to what we're sharing with you, what we're telling you. It's coming directly from God. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we should take heed. It's our responsibility to know where we are in time by reading and understanding this word. Amen. It's sad sometimes because Satan knows this word better than we do. Mm -hmm. Need to say it. Right. Right. We should all feel just a little bit of humility there, right? Right. Um, But collectively, as the body of Christ, Satan doesn't, right? All of us together as a whole, Satan can't know more than we know, That's right? right? Right. And we can take back whatever the enemy steals, so we have the authority that he does not. Amen? That's true. So let's bring up, Keegan, can you bring up John 10.10? 10? We're just going to, 
Again, you guys all know what John 10, 10 says, mm -hmm. but I'm just kind of teeing things up here. It says, the thief cometh not but to steal, not, oh, let me start over. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy, right? So we know that's the enemy, right? I am I, I am come that they might have life. Now, this is God. I am the great I am come that they might have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Amen? So now we know and we can discern what is God and what is Satan, right? Mm -hmm. We know the enemy's tactics. And like we, we discussed last Sunday, Satan comes to steal time to kill and then to destroy our destiny, which again are the promises of God, right? Right. All right. Um, let's go to Daniel 7.25, please. Thank you. Here it says, now again, he, who is he? Satan. Satan shall speak words against the Most High. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High, mm -hmm. which are who? Us, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And shall think to change the times and the law. And they shall be given into his hand for a time, times, and a half of time. So how does Satan steal, kill, and destroy? By thinking to change the times and the law. Right? Mm -hmm. This is Satan's thought process. But, now can you bring up Ephesians 6, 11, and 12? And I say, however, <laughs> but God, right? Mm -hmm. um, in conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with him through that relationship, through that intimacy of his word, draw your strength from him, that strength which, is his bound, which his boundless might provides. Put on God's whole armor, the armor of, heavy, of a heavy-armed soldier which God supplies, that you may be able to successfully stand up against all the strategies and the deceits of the devil. And let's just, before we go to verse 12, let's just, let's just stay here a moment because what is God's armor, right? We have the helmet of salvation. We have the breastplate, breastplate of righteousness, right? We have the sword of the spirit, which is God's word. We have a belt of truth. Right? We have a shield of faith and right. etc. So we have the whole armor. There is nothing that God holds back. Mm -hmm. Can I have verse 12, Keegan? For we are not wrestling with flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the despotisms, against the powers, against the master spirits who are the world leaders of this present darkness against the spirit forces of wickedness and heavenly supernatural sphere. So we are fighting in that 4D realm. We are fighting in the spiritual, and we're not fighting against one another because we're walking in love, right? Right. With, with one another. Um, so I just want to say we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Now, if you will just permit me now to to go here. So there's a, we're going to have Rob and Bullock speak, but before he speaks, I'm going to we're going to watch a portion mm -hmm. of what he shared in this particular podcast um, on Elijah Streams. But I kind of want to just kind of talk through some of it, and then you'll get to hear some of it directly from him. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then we'll pause it in between just to kind of give you a visual, some visuals to it. So he, Robin Bullock is 
when they talk about us being, we, can, we do not have to fear. We can have perfect peace because we're going to the other side, right? Mm -hmm. But when they say that we are in perilous times, why do they say that? Because we are in a time of two kings, of Saul and David. So if you know that story, and we covered it last week, all right? I'm not going to go into that. If you weren't here, get into the book of Kings, right? Mm -hmm. um, but we have two kings. But what we are learning from the prophet Robin Bullock is that we can know the time that we're in because the time we're in directly lines up with this word. Okay? Right. Mm -hmm. And he gives us, he, he, he speaks through an illustration um, back in 1992 when you had President Clinton and the First Lady Hillary Clinton in office, right? Mm -hmm. And Satan recognized the time. And the time was, it was during the time of King, he makes the parallel between the time of King Ahab and Jezebel, okay? So you have President Clinton and Hillary Clinton, and then you have King Ahab and Jezebel. Yes. Okay? And Ahab is under, okay, you have President Clinton, who is the president, who is holding the seat and position of president. But you have Jezebel, who has the influence and power. Right? right. And so much so that Ahab abandons God. Right. Okay? That's not a good place. No. For the kingdom. Not just those two, but everybody. Amen? Amen. Ahab had the crown and Jezebel had the power. Right. They offered babies to Baal. There was also a land scandal, right? That land scandal, we'll get more to the word on that. Someone got murdered, and Ahab was wounded during his term, but managed to finish it out. Ahab dies. Jezebel decides to run the country, but the Lord raises up a war captain named Jehu, son of Nimshi. Jezebel's own two or three eunuchs, and this is what's so fascinating. This is where you're going to have to listen to this whole thing when you get home and dig into this. Because... When it says two or three eunuchs, Robin said, God is usually definitive. So why the or, which is kind of loose, right? They threw her off the wall, killing her. But the war captain ran over her, and the dogs ate her. The war captain became king, and Israel had peace for 28 years. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Now, again, we're going to get into this parallel. So, Bill and Hillary Clinton occupied the presidency, but people recognized Hillary maintained the power. Right? They even said it. Right? right? That she, yeah. She had the power. Mm -hmm. Abortions grew to their highest level. During Clinton's presidency, there was a huge land scandal. Does anyone remember it? It was Whitewater. Yeah, you got it. Whitewater. And Jim McDougal was Clinton's real estate partner. And he dies suddenly of a heart attack. He also gets, that's in prison because he was the fall guy. It wasn't going to be the Clintons, right? <laughs> then, the, then after that, the Clintons go on vacation at a vineyard, Martha's vineyard. Remember Ahab coveted, what did he covet? He coveted Naboth's vineyard, right? Because it was, that land was nice and close to the palace, mm -hmm. and he wanted it, right? But Naboth, that was his inheritance, right? 
And he wasn't going to sell it. To just, he wasn't going to sell it. And, but Jezebel steps in, right, and kills him, and they confiscate the property anyway. So you see the parallel here? Mm -hmm. Or am I going too fast? Okay. Going. Bill Clinton impeached during his second term, but manages to finish it. Hillary then decides to run for president. God raises up a war captain to run against her. Do we know who that was? No, nope, not yet. Who is the war captain? Yes, John McCain, right? He is the war captain. He was a, he was a POW in Vietnam, and he was released from that, from that camp. Right. When Hillary and McCain, then, then when, when Hillary and McCain came to have a debate, Hillary's own party said she cannot beat the war captain, McCain, Jehu, okay? Mm -hmm. Hillary's own people throw her off the wall and put up who? Barack Hussein Obama, amen, in her place, okay? And that's Barack Hussein Obama, one of the eunuchs, okay? So this is not in the Bible. This is not playing out according to the story of Ahab and Jezebel, right? So now we are in unchartered territory, but that's where the prophets fill that gap, right? But Robin says, right there, the timeline is stolen. So Satan, st because they've gone off the word, now that door's been opened. Satan recognized the parallel, the plan. And he seized it and changed the narrative. So unless the devil can steal the timeline, it has to play out according to the word. Right. In other words, we can know right where we are in time by reading the Bible. But we have to know it. Or we are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Amen. But praise God for prophets and our pastors who see things before we do. Right? And that's why it's so important that we, we listen to our prophets and we listen to our pastor. But we should also be in this word for ourselves. Oh, amen. Because it's our inheritance. And why would we want to sell this inheritance to the devil? That's true. During Obama's second term, you felt hopeless. Because the timeline was stolen and there was no precedence in the, in the word to go by. And I will just share this with you because this is how I felt when Obama took office after he did that apology tour across the Middle East, apologizing for our, our prosperity in our nation, right, right? Right, And in our lives. And that disturbed me. And I just remember praying, and I told Pastor this, and I, I was a little naive at that time, but I was praying that he would be impeached. And I'm like, <laughs> and they weren't impeaching him. Right. And I'm like, Lord, if you're not going to impeach him, See, I was a little naive. If you're not going to impeach him, like he's going to do it for me, right? Mm -hmm. I needed to speak that. But I did say, Lord, take away his, take away his legacy. Right. Anything that he stood for or that this country got behind, it's null and void. And Amen. that's what I spoke. Amen. And I still believe that. I, I'm with you. Okay, so that, in a nutshell, <laughs> mm -hmm. I hope I did it justice, is what Robin Bullock, how he took the parallel of where we are in time to where we are in this word, okay? And just go over that again. I just really encourage you, because I, I had to go over it, like, a lot. Yeah. And like she said, it's not like ours. So mm -hmm. um, it's not something that... You, you understand it and you agree with it, but to articulate it sometimes, it takes a little bit more 
from the Lord, right? Yeah. More of that anointing. But right. um, I did have a portion now that I wanted to, Keegan, if you could bring up the video of Robin Bullock speaking on Elijah's streams. There we go. And could you start that? And we'll just listen through some of this. Get the lights, please. See, you're born of the word, and inside, inside the plan of destiny is in this book. Yeah. And when it gets away from it, then suddenly you're thinking, what is happening? And nobody knows how to fix it. Okay. So watch this. He builds a replica to show you who's behind it. The Democrat Party in 2008, but as he was receiving their nomination, they built a replica of the throne of Satan in Berlin that came out of Turkey, right. where the Antichrist uh, is supposed to be. Yeah, I so remember they, that. they built the replica that perfectly matched it. And Obama came out on stage, and it looked like a sea of people. And it was kind of like Hitler at Nuremberg. And Nuremberg, people don't know this, was designed after the throne of Satan. Intentionally after the throne Intentionally of Satan. after it. Man. A guy named Albert Speer built the, uh, designed Hitler's pedestal in Nuremberg after the throne of Satan. And it was on that pedestal Hitler uttered final solution to kill the Jews. That was his, that's where he said it from. So you see who's behind this timeline. So when it was seized, we felt hopeless. Remember, they lit up the White House rainbow colors. They threw Israel under the bus. Right. Everything was going on, and we had no hope. Looking at no hope. Everybody was scrambling. What's God? Now, can you bring up, before he goes into this next part, can you bring up those photos of the Pergamon altar? Right. He speaks to the Pergamon altar in Turkey, okay? And it's the second century BC. So that, we have a photo of it. This is a mu museum image of it. But this is what was erected in Turkey. And Pergamon altar, and then the name for Pergamon altar is Satan's seat, okay? Now, Keegan, can you bring up the next photo? Okay, thank you. And there you go. That is what's left of the Zeppelin grandstand in Nuremberg, Germany, where Hitler and his followers um, held their rallies, okay? Right, right. Now, can you bring up the last one? You can see some similarity here. That, that, that was the whole point of it. Now, you can't see it as well here, but this is in Bessel Field. This is Mile High Stadium in Denver. And this is where you can see the column, okay? You can see the columns and you can see the different levels, right? Just like yes. There, there's better images, but these were the old high resolution um, images I could get that would um, project well. But this is where um, Obama, Obama set the nomination um, during the DNC uh, convention. So, just wanted to give you a visual of those three things. Okay, you can continue, Keegan. Thank you. Say it. What's God saying? Yeah, and suddenly we've mistreated the trans, and now trans need to be in, in any bathroom they want to be. He this. just started decreeing this stuff. Oh, yeah, this right. Yeah. For, 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 for what precedent? It's yeah. not there. Yeah. Okay, so we didn't know what to do. So the Lord yeah. goes to a prophet and pronounced this. When it turned is when Obama refused to deal with ISIS. When it turned is when that happened. He wouldn't get rid of ISIS. Remember, ISIS He was, was calling that they were saying it was, the, yeah. this is not like, the, he was calling them the JV. Yeah. Is that the one? He was, after, uh, he was downplaying, right. oh, that's nothing. They're not a threat. Yeah. And he, yeah. they were cutting the heads off of children. Christians. Christians. Jews, you know, hang them up in a basket, burn them alive or whatever they were doing to them, line them up on the beach in orange jumpsuits and just cut their heads off. And Obama wouldn't deal with it. He would not deal with it. And when he did, 
this is what happened. All of a sudden, he stepped in. You know, they were calling him the anointed one, the Messiah. They called him the black savior. Mm. They started talking to him like he was Jesus. They made pictures of him like he was Jesus. And when he wouldn't deal with ISIS, even though the Lord had, had put him in office, when he wouldn't deal with ISIS, he stepped right into another timeline just like that. And that door opened and he stepped into the time of Saul. And he started becoming Saul at that point. When he, cause Saul wouldn't deal with the Amalekites. Yeah. Who were doing like the same stuff. And remember the Lord told Saul said, wipe them out. Yeah. But Saul well, spared them. Can you clarify one thing that sounded like a contradiction that you just said? Because okay. we've been talking about the, the enemy stole the timeline, put Barack sure. Obama there. But then you just said a second ago, even though the Lord had put Obama in office. Did you mean that or? Yeah, yeah, but now you have to remember a prophet anointed him to be in office. Okay. And so. Which prophet but, anointed well, him? Well, I don't, I don't want to say because I, I oh, don't okay. have permission right. to say. Yeah, yeah. But, okay. but here's the thing. Once it, once it was done, it wasn't no time that the Lord went back to the same prophet. And I heard them say it. Okay. He said, he lied to me. He lied to me. So more or less remove him. Okay. And so he did. And he was pulled down. When he did, that's when his presidential seal fell off his podium and everything. It rolled away, didn't it? Yeah. It fell off yeah. and rolled away. Yeah, that's just like. Okay, we're just going to pause there real quick. Because I want, there's just a really short clip of what he just said with Obama and the presidential seal. Amen. Unless we harness the potential of every American and ensure that their skills match up to the work of the future. And that starts with education, especially in fields like science and technology and engineering and math. We cannot sustain, whoops. Was that my, uh... oh goodness, that's all right. All of you know who I am. You know something. But I'm sure there's somebody. Something you would have read in the Old Testament. I know. You know that? I know. Okay, and so you could you could see that, couldn't you? If you in a story in the Old Testament. And Obama stood up behind his podium and the Lord removed him. The prophet said, you are removed. And his presidential seal fell off his podium. And you can just away. see that. And, and then uh, he, he hesitated, looked at it and then finally yeah, said, well, I guess I know who I am. You know? He yeah, thought, yeah. Yeah. He said, uh, y'all know who I am. Yeah. Well, nobody, the heaven didn't anymore. And what happened was he had all the traits of the Antichrist. Remember, yeah. people said that people even thought he was going to be the Antichrist. Yeah, because he was. And they called him the Anointed One, the, as, all the traits of an Antichrist. But then suddenly he refused to deal with ISIS. And when he did, the same prophet said, "You have become Saul." And a timeline was recognized, and it turned, and a door opened, and we saw hope, because. When he became Saul, notice he couldn't get anything done. He had control of all the house and Senate more or less. And he had his pen and his phone and he had everybody. He just turned gray. He couldn't get anything done because the anointing to be king had lifted just like Saul. And so a time. Well, line, that would have been the time season when uh, Kim wouldn't have been the only one, maybe, but it's the one that we know the most about began to prophesy Trump. Coming yes, back, that must have been that's about that exactly time. right. That's exactly okay. right. And okay. see, that's what I'm saying. That's yeah. when it turned. Yeah. He he stepped the he Obama opened a door. When he opened the door to be Saul, he also opened the door to a David. And when he opened that door to a David, the prophet immediately knew it. 
You are yeah. Saul, and I'm going to raise up my David. Now, that's what Kim said. Yeah. So you're oh, he going, did? Well, he did? Well, he said, okay. yeah. He said, you can't spare them, Obama. You can't spare ISIS. You can't spare them. And he talks about, I'm going to raise up a David, and so on. You, uh, Something to this effect, anyway. But yeah. anybody can find it. It's not hard. Yeah, I do it. remember him calling him a David, now that you yeah. mention that. And yeah. so that's when the parallel was recognized of a new timeline. Okay. And that's what saved us was a new timeline. Was was to when he became Saul, then David was on the scene. But then that's what dictated the election that was hidden. That's what was that's why you never saw it. Because in the time of Saul and David, David was king, but nobody knew it. Because Samuel went to Saul and said, you're no longer the king. You don't, or you don't have a kingdom anymore, is what he said. So he had a throne and a crown, but he didn't have a kingdom. And he said, it's given to a neighbor better than you. And that was all that was said. Now that could have put it, Steve, on, a, on any timeline at that point. But when the prophet turned to walk away and Saul grabbed his coat and tore the coat, the prophet Samuel whirled back around and looked at him and said, your kingdom today, you have lost your kingdom the way you rent my coat. Today, the Lord will rend your kingdom out of your hand. Today, it's gone. All of a sudden, the time was put on it. Today, you lost oh, it. Oh, interesting. I see what you're saying. And that when, today wasn't just... Uh, an interesting factor. He's, he's he changed the timeline. That's right. Started because right he he put a time on it, at when it would go, and boom, it was gone. And from that moment on, even though he still had the crown for years, fourteen more years or eleven more years, yeah. years he the anointing from heaven was gone. It was gone. And yeah. when it was gone, notice he couldn't get nothing done. Yeah. And when and and then suddenly he loses his mind. So Samuel immediately saws weeping and crying, and Samuel just walks away. Now Samuel was sad because he said, the Lord would have established your kingdom forever, but look what you've done. And we know it had to be Benjamin. We've talked about that before. It had to come from the tribe of, of Benjamin, but it was ultimately because Benjamin was going to be kept in Egypt, and it was ultimately given to Judah because Judah offered himself instead of Benjamin to ransom him. So all these are times, and this is a time to be born, a time to die, a time to laugh, a time to weep, a time to do, all these times, and that's what Satan thinks to change. Now, so Samuel walks away. He heads toward the hill country to Jesse's house. He finds Jesse's son. He offers a sacrifice, pours the oil on David. Now David not only has the kingdom, but he's anointed to be the king. Samuel, uh, Saul has a crown and a throne, but has no kingdom and no anointing. And he lost his mind because it's too, he can't function as a king. If he's not anointed, you will lose your mind. That's what he did. So now you see when that door opened and Obama became Saul, see, we were in uncharted waters until he stepped through that door and refused to deal with ISIS yeah. and he became Saul. When that happened, then David had to be recognized as king, but then he had to go into hiding yeah. for a while, even though he was still a king. Well, you know, and let's jump forward to, so Trump then became the king in, in this analogy. That's right. And did for a while, but then does the Saul, then Biden picks up becoming, now he's playing the part of Saul. That's right. 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 And, yeah. Who would throw so, the spear at least at tw David. once or twice. And there's another third, a third something. Yeah. You, you see, you see what I'm talking about now, yeah. you know, why uh, David Trump. Yeah. Donald Trump became the president, yeah. but then he had to be running from Saul yeah. at some point because we're in that time. And, and Robin, does that, is that, uh, what's the word? Is that irreconcilable? What's the word? Not irreconcilable. Is that um, 
immutable. He was going to have to be running because he's in that story. If if they keep, unless the timeline changes. Okay. And see, men work with God, but there's a there's a never ending line of time. Yeah. But here's what I'm trying to say: okay. Satan recognizes timelines. Yeah. Now watch this close. So here you see what I mean. Okay, Trump had to be recognized as king when Samuel poured the oil. Yeah. But then David had to run from Saul when he lost his mind. Yeah. So that's why David was still the king. That's why you know Trump won the presidency in 2020. Yeah. Yeah. He's still the president. And all the people want to know what he's saying. But the Saul with no mind starts trying to destroy him. So he chases him. In modern times, it's indict, 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 indict. Yeah. In those days, in the ancient days, it was kill him. Yeah. In modern times, it's indict. Well, so now you know why there was a four years visible, four years invisible. Yeah. Because the same yeah. way with David. Okay. Now watch two or three eunuchs. Obama was the first Saul when he had a mind. Yeah. Biden became the second Saul. They didn't have a mind, but really was the first eunuch's third term mm. through him, two yeah. or three. Three. And then so that planted a seed for Trump to have three, one, two seen and one unseen the same way. The unseen is what, we, what, what we've been witnessing for that's the last what we, that's exactly three and a half right. years, whatever it's been. That's exactly right. Yeah. And so you've got these timelines. Now, to change the timeline now, there's only one way to do it. Okay. Satan has to get rid of David. That's the only way to change the timeline because all the javelin throws missed here. And Satan is a legal devil. Yeah. So he has to try to get rid of David. And if David's not on the scene, we have no precedent for what happens next. Yeah. You see what I mean? Well, and it's why uh, people Now that's should, spiritual warfare. It is. And it's like, and with that knowledge, people should continue to pray for the safety of David, which is uh, Trump. Absolutely. He cannot be... Uh, outed, what's the word? He cannot be ended. He cannot be killed. The, the, the prayers are protect him. I mean, I've heard that he's uh, many times, um, many, many places they're saying he's completely protected. Often uh, in, they'll say he's in, what's the mountain in um, Colorado Springs, Cheyenne Mountain. Many times he's in Cheyenne Mountain being protected you know even well he sure wasn't protected and, in pennsylvania was or yeah. Phil, was he? he yeah butler yeah yeah he wasn't protected in butler was he yeah and and here is the thing it's do you see what i'm talking about yeah. if david had left that story just for instance steve what if david had have been killed by saul what would have happened i mean it's devastating to think about it's well, over. we don't have any answer yeah we're off the timeline yeah. Okay. If and Satan would have changed it, he thought to change it. Yeah. Okay. What What about this? What if? What just for instance? You know. What if this this stuff takes place? What if David uh, Trump leaves the scene? What if? We see we're following this timeline. Yeah. Okay. What if Samuel? had have been killed by Saul before he poured the oil mm. on David. The prophet was carrying the anointing to make him the king. Yeah. Okay, that's why Samuel said, Saul will kill me if he hear, hears I'm going to uh, pour that oil. He's, Samuel's thinking, what happens if he dies? Well, I mean, I, you know, in my shallow thinking, I think, well, God will find another prophet to send him instead. But that's probably, probably can, it only could be Samuel for whatever reason. Well, it, he, he's the one that rent it from the king. He should be the one that give it. Well, sure. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and here is the deal. Uh, there could be somebody else raised up. Now watch close. Yeah. How long will it take 
before the timeline is corrected again and yeah. starts something else. Yeah, it's devastating to think see, about. See, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. If, if it, okay, when the first Jehu didn't run over, the war captain didn't run over Jezebel, it took 14 years, and we're still trying to get her run over. Yeah. In the spirit, in the yeah. spirit. Yeah. I'm talking about the spirit of Jezebel has got yeah. to be, it's never been dealt with. So Robin pointed out something to me the other day. Okay, the first Jezebel, Hillary, is absolutely too old to do it again. So Kamala took her place. And now there's a new Jehu that's going to have to run over in the campaign. So who's the new Jehu? Do we have a, who's the new Jehu? Trump. Oh, I see. Okay. See, Trump has to fulfill what was lost, even though he's David. Yeah. You're dealing with all these things. So some some characters would be would play the part of two different. They would have to, because it never happened. Okay, there's no nothing to. There's no precedent. To. No. Yeah. Now, now you understand. Satan recognizes, and I'm just saying you. You know yeah. what I mean in general. But Satan is recognizing timelines and doors that swing open, and it turns and moves and turns. Now, if he has a plan. And he has a cunning and he's recognizing timelines and the church don't yeah by and large the church ain't, ain't got a clue well most of most of the church including me to very recently have never connected to what you're saying today that that, that he's in a story and he can't yeah trump is in the story hillary's in the story obama's in the story and they can't get out unless the enemy comes in and t steals it and and the way to bring it back is the enemy is the way it comes back the enemy blows it and we're back on track well here. see here's the thing they can yeah. get out of it that's yeah. why i always say you better pray they don't trump don't choose to stop yeah i see you see what i mean because it, uh, nobody gets rid of choice you always have a choice yeah. the thing is if you choose something, God can put somebody like in Mordecai and Esther's place. Yeah. He said the Lord, he said the Lord will raise up somebody from another place, which was only a matter of days from that point or a month or however long it was. But if the Satan steals it, there is no replacement that anybody can see mm. until mm. another door opens. Obama was standing on the throne of Satan until he refused to deal with ISIS. And when he refused to deal with that, it was a timeline of Saul, which brought David, which brought hope, which brought us back to the place. And the prophets had to come on the scene to carry the oil to pour on David. And on and on it went. Now, if he can get rid of David, and he tried that in Butler. Yeah. If he could get rid of him, we don't know what happens next. See, what if Pharaoh had killed all the children of Israel at the Red Sea? What if he could have killed them all at the Red Sea? Well, the same thing. The same thing would be what if he what if he what if he killed all of the babies in Bethlehem? And yeah, what would have happened? Jesus. Yeah, yeah. But what if Joseph hadn't have got up and left town when the angel yeah. woke him up? Right. It's devastating to think about because you you don't know. Yeah. And so here is the, here's the big what ifs. You know, what if you hadn't have done this program and chose to do it? Me and you wouldn't be sitting here having right. this conversation. What um, if I hadn't have chose to do anything the Lord's told me to do? So here we are. Satan has got everything to a timeline again. There's one guy, even from the mouth of Harari, their false prophet. The dark prophet. Yeah. He said, if he's elected, it will be the kind of death blow. The kind of death blow to our world agenda. Yes, Lord. Let it well, die, man. That's right. Well, yeah. the but he based it on one man. All right. So there's only one answer. Get rid of that man. Yeah. To change the timeline. And he thinks to change it. Well, there was prophecies given about Kamala way back in 19 and 20.
that I gave way back then where the Lord told her in one prophecy, said, your whoredoms won't work this time. All your bed partners have found you undesirable. And he started, and then there was another prophecy that said she would take and, and have her own agenda that don't include Joe Biden. This was years ago. Really? And now look at it. Well, the Lord, when something starts, the Lord brings a prophetic word to end it before it starts. That's the word. That's like what happened at the Tower of Babel. Mm. Babel. When he said Babel, it was a prophetic word. They could never do that tower anymore. Well, this timeline, Satan thinks to steal and change. He's got to get rid of Trump to do it. Now, the, uh, the way people say, well, we can pray for Trump. Yes, and you should. But the way you're going to get rid of it and keep that third javelin from coming his direction, the church is the only entity the government fears, Satan fears, all the spiritual wickedness, the four classes of spirit, they're all afraid of the church. They're scared of the church. The church is going to have to speak. We're going to have to speak that Trump is the guy. He is anointed. He's the one that should be the president. We're going to have to speak. Pastors are going to have to tell it from their pulpit. It's like, are you, in other words, it almost sounds like you're saying they need. That's, there's more. There's a good, probably 20, 30 minutes more, but you guys can go home and and listen to the whole thing and get even more from it, right, than you did the first time. Right. Did you want to chime in or do you want? No, that's, that's a boatload. Well, do you guys know, let me ask this question. Do you guys know who, know, who Noah Harari is? Have you seen and heard him speak? Right. If you haven't, go home and just do a quick Google, okay? He's part of the World Economic Forum. Right. Okay? I can't remember. Does anybody remember the first name? It's something Noah Harari. I can't think of it either, but the Holy Spirit might bring it back just in time. But that's important because we know that the one world order, again, anything with world in it, right? You have the United Nations. You have NATO, which is the world world's supposed military, right? We have the World Trade Organization, the World Economic Forum, the Council of Foreign Relations. All of that embodies the one world order. That's why they, that's why this, we can't sit there and look to China and Russia or whoever else is the big bad wolf not to protect their country, their sovereignty, their own country, right? That's what they need to be doing, and that's what we need to be praying that they do. Right. Okay? Because we don't want these other entities to take over their sovereignty. Right. Does that make sense? Mm hmm. Um, it's really important that we listen to the prophets because it gives us our direction, right? Um, especially in elections, right? We can't forget. Um, I'm glad Kim brought out that it's our seed, right? And it's a sin. Kenneth Colton said, it is a sin not to vote. That's true. Okay? I so take it seriously. Take that, that job on, that responsibility on to learn who we're voting for, right? Right. Just like we have to dig into this and to know what this says. Mm -hmm. um, speak what the prophets speak. We've been doing this in the back room, in the prayer room. We are praying for Donald Trump and his family and the protection, right? Mm -hmm. But that, that he would continue in that, right? right? And that he would continue to choose God's ways and not the world's ways. That's right. Um... What else did I want to say? Collectively, again, collectively as a body, 
Remember, Satan is afraid of us, right? Because God has given us the authority on the earth. We are co-laborers in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And all we have to do is speak. That's all I have. I know that, that um, as Robin Bullock was sharing this, he said that the pastor should be saying these things from the pulpit. Mm -hmm. Amen. We can pray about that too. Right. And that's exactly if you listen, because some of you have said, oh, I don't believe that, but it's out there, and I said it. And that's what God wants me to do, is to tell you whether you receive it or not, I can't help that. But everything he's talking about, and we were talking about everything to this date, I have said, mm -hmm. all right? And Robin Bullock is standing behind that, of course, and uh, he's been one of the top prophets, mm -hmm. okay, for President Donald Trump as well. Mm -hmm. Now, as I said to you, we met him. Um, last year he was at uh, Copeland's again, okay? He waits behind, and then he comes, and also where we sit, we can go in the same spot where he's talking to other people. But the year before, we had a picture taken with him, and they're very, very nice people. But he's very grateful very humble, but he doesn't say anything without God telling him first, but there's still things that he said a bit that he couldn't release yet. Mm -hmm. Why? Why is there things that he cannot release yet? Do you remember? It's not God's time. I don't recall. It's not God's time <laughs> because the whole thing with the security, when they... Um, you know, mm -hmm. shot at President Donald Trump. Things cannot be said yet. Why? Because they were taking and gathering up the FBI and a lot of the security, mm -hmm. security people that are very crooked. Okay? So if, you, if he says it, if Robin Bullock says it, or like Steve says from Elijah Streams or any one of them before their time, these people may get tipped off and try to take out, to get out. Like I know it was Tom Hanks that he got tipped off and tip, a tip, you know, and um, him and his wife tried to leave the country. Mm -hmm. I remember that. To get out from under, but they couldn't. They couldn't. They caught him at the, at the borders and they couldn't leave. So, but there's so many actors and actresses and so many of the senators, so many of our gover governors, mayors, and so on that are so involved with all of this. But I think the most exciting thing, Brenda, is that it's all getting cleaned up. Amen. It's all getting cleaned up. Did you, do you just want to share us how many years have have been stole from time well because of that where satan during obama's terms that's where satan got to steal the timeline and he stole 28 years and i remember reading it's in the pool in the portal and this book is written kind of as a kind of a story with the character micah um so it's an easy read, but it gets deep, <laughs> even though it, it yeah. Right. Anyways, Satan got to steal 28 years. So if you go back to Obama's term of 2008, 2009, that brings you to 2035, 2036. Right. That's the time frame that got stolen. Right. Right? Um, do you want me to go there? Yes. <laughs> I'm not sure I can. <laughs> this is where it gets deep. And I'm just going to read it to you guys. Well, okay. you guys are ready for deep, aren't you? I know to, you may yes. say, well, this isn't helping me. Yes, it will, because these are the end times. And we have got prophets that are telling us it is the end time. Let me mm -hmm. tell you real quick. Mm -hmm. Last night when we were watching Believer's Voice, Southwest Believer's Voice of Victory, then Brother Copeland was saying how many nations, 103 nations, were in, in registered and were watching online or there or mm -hmm. whatever. And when he said Iraq, 
Mm, they have gotten into Iraq, and that was such a taboo. But places that they couldn't get in before, they're in. Amen. Because of your prayers, because we're praying, pray in the spirit. And another thing, when we say, oh, we'll just leave it to God, he'll take care of us. No, we have to mm. do our part, don't we? Amen. Trump did his part, didn't he? Mm -hmm. And yeah. we did our part by voting. Because we know, and you heard Robin Bullock say that, that President Donald Trump is still our president. Yes. He never conceded. Yes. All right? But right now, what is he doing? He's waiting for that right mm -hmm. time to step back in with our and a vice president. I, should I say that? I don't think Vance is, I know Vance is not going to be the vice president. I know that. I know that. Trump takes them like Pence and holds them real close, his enemies. Mm -hmm. And then he hangs them up to dry and shows. Yes. Right? So, and for some of the, you, this may be a little far out. But to know these things so that if people are interested in hearing about it, you want to be able to share or tell them where they can go to get information. Or go to YouTube and look up Robin Bullock. Robin B. Bullock. So, yes, yeah, share that, please. Um, I just want to I want to pivot just for a second before okay. we go there. Remember when Robin Bullock said that Trump was Jehu? He's the war captain right now. Mm -hmm. And we can make that parallel right now because we know that we're in a state of martial law. Right. It's called national state of a national emergency we're in a national emergency right and we've been in national emergencies for i don't i can't even remember when we've been out of one so it's been constant is what i'm trying to say it's constant right so to to make that parallel in your mind to know that he is still our commander in chief is yes. what i'm saying he is the war captain okay all right so now back to satan stealing 28 years um, now, you may say, oh, this doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any difference. Yes, it is, because there is a time for everything, and God has that already, but Satan's trying to steal time so that he can take over. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So top of page 63 of Pool in the Portal. Right. And I'll admit, I didn't get this the first time, but whoa, did it stick out the second. In, in legal time... 2,000 years after Jesus arose from the dead would be somewhere around 2030. What year are we in? 2024. Okay. All right. So two th we know that we have a lease on this earth for 6,000 years, right? That's six years from now, less than six years, five and a half. Okay? Right. If Jesus was sent to return... In 2030 for the rapture of the church then 2036 would put us at the end of the tribu tribulation period mm. the dates put it past the rapture date so if you didn't understand that get the book and read it times are very very important and the enemy has been trying to steal, kill, and destroy from us for how long? Now, mm -hmm. what I want to do, what I want to do here, the, uh, to me, this is excellent. And if you don't have understanding, it, please take this and re-listen, but get the book. You can get mm -hmm. it right through Robin Bullock's ministry, mm -hmm. okay? And um, you can listen to this video on YouTube as well. All right. Mm -hmm. But now what I want to do, Keegan, would you bring up a couple of those clips that I had? Because I walked into the grocery store the other day because you go into a grocery store and what can you eat from that grocery store? What can you buy and eat? What is good for you? Well, I go in there and what are the, watermelons, no seed, mm -hmm. oranges, no seed, lemon, no seed. Why? Now they're genetically altered, and it's not good for you. There's, there's not the nutrition. It's like you have an egg, mm -hmm. and if the rooster isn't with the hens, 
that thing is dead. Mm -hmm. All right? So now we need the seeds in the food, but they're taking the seeds out of the food and make it sound like, oh, now you don't have to put up with those seeds in your mouth. No. So I went over and I turned a card in um, at Festival Foods, and I'm going to ask you please to do the same and tell them we want products with seeds in them because they're genetically altered, and if they're genetically altered, they're no good for you, and you will see problems with your health, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now, do they have other things that are genetically altered, or did they add something in there that's not good for us? Because what's happening is our doctors are really busy. Mm -hmm. A lot of surgeries, a lot of stuff going on. I wonder why. What are we eating? Okay, can you bring that up, sweetie? And just turn the lights down a little bit so they can see this, huh? Oh, you're going to bring that one up. Okay. I'm McCormick Spices. McCormick was sued for having heavy metals in their spices. Ground basil, ginger, and turmeric were among the products that were found heightened level of heavy toxic metals. These metals can cause cancer and serious damage to brain development. Tisk, tisk, McCormick. So McCormick spices have a lot of heavy metals in them so just don't buy them and write them a letter i even told the gal at the front desk i said mccormick oh no this was in the um organic foods i said by the way in the in the the spices with mccormick they put a lot of metal in their seasoning which is not I'm going to have to look into that, she said. Hmm. But see, you know, it's they're feeding you the Kool-Aid a little bit at a time. Would that be true? Mm -hmm. yeah. Does your body accept metal? Is it good for your body? Mm -hmm. No, no. Okay, what's the next one? Eating from buffets. Because the chicken is actually not chicken, it actually comes from rats. If you ever see those videos of those farms in these foreign countries, and they are feeding these huge rats, I'm talking like 20-pound rats, yeah, those rats are ending up in the food supply. Because realistically, we can't tell the difference, because there are 8 billion people on this earth, and there is not enough meat to sustain everyone. So it's very important that you stay away from these buffets. And that's why you got to read the herbal tablets, because this book exposes everything. And they tried to get rid of this book before. Stop eating from buffets. Did you get that? Just play it once more, just once more. Because the chicken is actually not chicken, it actually comes from rats. If you ever see those videos of those farms in these foreign countries and they are feeding these huge rats, I'm talking like 20 pound rats, yeah, those rats are ending up in the food supply. Because realistically, we can't tell the difference because there are 8 billion people on this earth and there is not enough meat to sustain everyone. So it's very important that you stay away from these buffets. And that's why you got to read the herbal tablets because this book exposes everything. And they tried to get rid of this book before. Stop eating. Wow. Is that a little enlightening to you? Them rats are big rats, aren't they? No, we're not supposed to eat rats, are we? No. I don't think so. Okay, they say rats and pigs we're not supposed to eat. Well, there's more than that. Now, there's one more. There should be one more. Elon Musk, you know him. Have you ever questioned, like, what is the Starbucks logo? Uh, it's like a siren? Yes, exactly. It's a siren. So um, a lot of people can see it as like a mermaid. Mm. What you can see is a lady with a crown and um, kind of like a tail, right? Now, do you ever wonder what a siren actually is? Like, why did they even use that as their logo? A siren in ancient Greek mythology was um, actually used, right? The sirens would infatuate sailors and get their attention to come towards them so that they can steal their souls. So, in the sense, look, um, this is like crazy marketing on a spiritual sense. They use the image of a siren to attract customers, then they go and get their coffee. Mm. Now, this is where it's even crazier. Sirens in Greek mythology were known to attract people through their singing, right? Now I have a question for you. Have you ever heard of Starbucks jingles? Um, actually, I, I don't think so. Never. Is Starbucks the only fast food franchise that you have never heard a jingle for? Think about it. There's no Starbucks jingle. So the theory goes that um, because they're using the symbol of the siren, they don't even need one. Wow. Now this is scary. <laughs> now, they said also in another one that when you have the cup, 
there's that writing on it, and I don't know what color is it, a green again? There is actually something in there that releases into your body because it creates heat, you know, and you're, so before you look at Starbucks or drink it, pray about your stuff first. Mm -hmm. And this has been out for a long time. But people, then, and then I also watched one, and these gals were buying just the empty cups to, to take around just because they thought it was so cool. Mm -hmm. Well, you're touching the container. Would, will, can things go through our skin? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really, you could have fooled me. You put lotion on and that sucks right in. Yeah. Now, people that are getting tattoos, now they're having problems. Why are they having problems? Because that ink is seeping in to the bloodstream. And they're proving it. Mm -hmm. And now, so a lot of, not a lot, but there are people saying, we have to get the tattoos removed. Because this is a, it's, but this was all planned because in Leviticus it says not to tattoo our bodies. See, that body doesn't belong to you. Amen. You were bought. Okay? So, is it good for us? But see, this is the things they've been doing to us for how long? How long? You know, when you look at pigs, for instance, and we eat bacon, we eat pork, we eat ham, we eat what else? Think about that first. There's no digestive system, so all of the, the parasites go to the flesh of the pig, and we eat that. Is that good for you? No. Mm -mm. So think before you eat something. Think before you buy. And like I said, I'm going through Festival Foods, and I'm looking at the canned products, now, there is a percentage, like there's rats in these places, rats and mice and stuff. If that gets cut up and falls into the can, the, the, the FDA okays just so much. And that was a long time ago I, said, I saw that as well. They showed it because a person had a can of their beef stew, and they actually found a, a skin with hair on it. And as they checked it out, it was from a rat. But it's okay, right? Because somebody gets paid off. Is it good to make things from scratch, so to speak? Yes. Uh-huh. And it's good to pray over your food. Why would you pray over your food? Mm -hmm. Because you pray over it, you bless it, and you sanctify it in Jesus' name. It, you aren't doing that just to display you're so Christian-like. We do, the, like Kenny's family, we were out on Friday night. We all join hands all the way around that. We don't care who's there. And we started that a long time ago, didn't we? Just join. What do we join? Because we're going to pray. Kenny's going to pray. And now they'll say, oh, we all got to pray. Okay. Why? Because we want to pray for that food so it doesn't kill us. And there might be something in there that you're allergic to. Hmm. Right? So you got to be picky where you're going to eat. I know certain places, I'm not going to mention them, but they said don't go there because it's taken from a package and it's not good for you, so blah, blah, right? So now what we have to do is we have to, Father, I give to you this. I'm going to go shopping. I give it to you. Mm -hmm. Show me what foods are good for us and show me which are not. When I go to a restaurant, ask them. Now, those are pork links. Our, I mean, just sausage link. Is there any pork in it? I don't know. I'll check. They come back. Never had anybody ask that before. Because they can shove them full of pork. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's also beef in there. Mm -hmm. But that's why we've got to stop, listen to the Holy Spirit. All right? The other thing that I've been seeing more of is the med beds. The big mm -hmm. med beds that people are going to be go, able to go into if they have a disease, if they have a leg missing, an arm missing, an eye missing, or whatever, it will restore it. But these are some big machines. Mm -hmm. And my niece, who is a retired nurse now, said she knows all about them. Praise the Lord. So they're going in our hospitals around us. Amen. So that's why we want to pray. And when, when people, 
well, we don't have to pray. Everything is in control. God will just take care of it. Yeah, God will just take care of it. No, God said we have the authority here. We are supposed to pray. We are supposed to. We. But we keep on, oh, God will take care of it. Hmm? I got into a wonderful conversation yesterday with a young man. Six months, he's come to know Jesus. And he saw it on his cell phone. And he started following this teacher. And he said, my whole life changed. First time I met him. First time I ever met him. And before you know it, we are... we. Uh, like we've been talking for years. And he's asking me questions, and then he's, he's saying things, and I'm saying, well, what does the Bible say? And what about the book of Ruth? What about the... I didn't know there was a book of Ruth in the Bible. He's only saved for six months, but he said, I decided to listen to that. And I just knew I had to do what the guy said. Mm -hmm. I said, so you asked Jesus into your heart. He said, is that what I did? I said, yes. He said, it changed my life. I'm not, t I'm not running around anymore. I'm watching what I do. I'm watching my body, blah, blah. You understand what he's saying? And I'm like, whoa. So God is on the move. Mm -hmm. God Amen. is on the move because there are people waiting for you to come and tell them about Jesus or to pray over them so they can be healed. Amen. Correct? Amen. Yes. So I think that's all we've got for today, unless mm -hmm. you have something else to say. No. Nope. No. I hope this helped you. Um, but do me a favor. Read the book of Ecclesiastic sometime. It's quite a book. Okay. And I won't go into that right now because I'd have to go too far. But um, let me see here. So here we've got, we've got President Donald Trump. We're going to pray for him. And always be praying for him. Please pray in the spirit because we don't know how we ought to pray. Uh, I wanted to ask you one more question. Now, he's, David stepped away, aside twice because Saul threw the javelin at him, Correct. Mm -hmm. And when he threw the javelin at him, he just stepped aside. And then he threw it again, stepped aside. Then what happened, Brenda? There was a third javelin. There was a third javelin. So now this is, what about Trump? They've had an, uh, uh, is there going to be another attempt on his life? There could be. There could very well be because the word says it. Yes, because the word says it. So there very well could be, according to David, according what Saul did to David, and we're re-watching this whole story through David and Saul. So there could very well be another attempt on our President Donald Trump's life. And you do not want that. No. Now, what was Harris's occupation before she ran for whatever she is? Anybody know? She was what? I can't hear you. A call girl. Did you get that? And, but this is all going to come out. Right? She's burying herself. But that's why you pray in the spirit. Lord, I give this to you. And now I'm going to pray in the spirit because I don't know how to, I ought to pray. And then you pray in the spirit and then you thank him. And you give him the glory. And oh, that one book I put it, no, here. I'll just give you this real quick. April, August. Okay. What things happen when there's certain things you say from the word of God because there is power in the word. Anytime you speak the word of God, there's power in the word. When you feel like you pray and you just can't pray anymore, 
pray in the spirit, but then get it in your head that there is power when you speak God's word and it leaves out a fragrance, the fragrance of God and miracles. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Right here in today's reading. Take those things and write those down and put them up on your mirror and speak it when you're going through hard times. Speak the word of God. But knowing the power that's in that word, and there's a fragrance going out, but the more that you pray in, a, in tongues and the more you speak the word of God, people will see that light. This, this young man that Pastor Kenny was talking about before, seeing me 30, I have, he's telling me, you know, all this nice stuff, and I'm like, I have no idea. I didn't say it to him, but I thought, I have no idea who you are. And he acted like he knew me forever. And, and of course, you know, my nephew is, yeah, yeah. But that's God in a person. Always remember it's God that they see through you because I have nothing to give. Amen. But God does, does he? Amen. So you give out the word of God and God will come back and he will bless you beyond what you could ever say. When you say, by the stripes of Jesus, I was healed. Amen. What happens? What happens? The power of God takes over whatever is wrong in your body and makes it right. Yeah. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastisement that bought us peace was upon Christ. And by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. Amen. Boy, you just, you just put a mouth load out yeah. there, didn't you? And now you praise him. Because that, now that goes through you. Yes. Not only on you, but through you. Amen. Does that make sense? Yes. So, Father, I thank you. You are holy. There's just no one like you. You're just so good. Father, do you want me to pray over it? Does anybody need prayer? No? Okay, next week we'll pray again. You get, you know, start saying, I plead the blood of Jesus over myself. And start saying right here what it's saying. And the scripture is Psalms 136, 1. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good and his mercy endures forever. Keep on saying this stuff over your body, over your loved ones, because this is what brings life in abundance to the full, to the overflow, to you. Amen. But it's going down inside of you. You can hear your voice vibrate. Just go, hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, I want to hear you. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Can you feel that, yeah. that vibrating? See, that's exactly what happens is your body now takes that and picks up that vibration, right? And that's the power of God healing or restoring or joy or peace. I know when I came in here, it got a little heavy in the back room, the anointing, and I was having a hard time. I was like I was plastered against the wall. And I went to my office and I asked for strength when I got it, but then I got out here and it, it wanted to leave me again. But God is, he is so merciful. He wants to, to heal every one of you. He wants to heal your children. He wants them all to come into the, the, the glory of God. That's all we have to do is praise and thank him. Thank you for bringing my children. Thank you for bringing my grandchildren. Thank you, Father God, for our business. Thank you, Father God. Oh, we have the most wonderful employees. Thank you. Speak the word only. Amen. Right? So let's stand. God, you are good, and your mercy endures forever. Amen. Now, Father God, I do. I plead the blood of Jesus over each one here, and that today they will relax. Their bodies will be completely relaxed, Father God. And Father will be able to enjoy today instead of running around like rag muffins. We'll just be able to rest, rest in you and enjoy you, Daddy. Thank you, Father. Thank you for everything you do for us. Right now, thank him what he has done for you, folks. Thank him right now. Thank him for what he has done for you. What has he done for you? What has he done? Do you have a nice home? 
How about your, your husband, your wife, your children, your grandchildren? How about your parents? How about your neighbors? Just give God praise because what he wants us to have is that peace, that joy, that love that continues to flow, and that's how he gets through to us. But if you're in worry or fear, he can't get through to you. Amen? Amen? So God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Amen.